Captain Whitehall with Company D, Second United States Sharpshooters. Today's video um, is actually going to be a multi-part video, and that's going to be on how to construct a Wamba White & Company fatigue blouse kit. Uh, I sew these kits for pretty much everyone in our company. This kit is actually particular to our newest member, Private White. So congratulations, uh, Private White. You actually get to see your whole coat being sewn. So you get the whole process and basically you'll know when it's done when the video gets posted. Uh, the best part about these kits is the instructions. They're very helpful, very in-depth, and they're in color. Uh, there are some people out there who do provide kits and all their instructions either are in black and white so you really can't tell the difference between different materials or there's no pictures at all. Um, I've dealt with one of those kits before and it was very difficult and it's a great step-by-step -step process of how to walk through and start with your fatigue blouse. And with the kit you get everything you need. You have your two sleeves with linings, you have your four-piece body, you have your interfacings, your cuff sleeves, your collar, and your lining. And the best part of these kits is the lining. Uh, Wamba and White provide fantastic uh, linings, especially if you are doing a Shukal Arsenal kit. Uh, Shukal Arsenal was known for having just wacky linings, plaids, checkers, stripes, all sorts of crazy material. Um, I don't think there's any member in our unit who has a sack coat kit from Wamba White and Company that has the same lining as someone else in the company. With their kits also, you get the thread. This is a logwood dyed thread uh, done off a skein. And it comes completely wound, so there's no loose ends that you're gonna just get completely lost with. And the thread is fantastic. I actually, uh, every kit that I've done, I've always had spares left over. And I use it for repairing uniforms and everything like that. And it comes in perfect lengths for sewing. In fact, I'm going to prep this right now. Um, there's even instructions found on Wamba and White uh, on their website of how to do these. You get the first person uh, how to on this. Take your fabric scissors. Don't use the scissors in your cupboard. Please don't. Fabric scissors are the best. Don't use your fabric scissors to cut paper, cardboard, stuff like that. I'm sure there's been quite a few viewers who are going to be watching this. Their mom sews, their wife, or maybe even their grandma. And I'm sure when you were younger, you decided to do arts and crafts, decided to use their fabric cutting scissors, and them completely freaking out on you. It happened to me with my great grandma once, and I learned from a very early age not to do it. Uh, so you want to completely unwind your skein just like this. Uh, there's always a knot securing it. So with the knot at one end, take fabric scissors, cut, and cut. That way you have the perfect length to sew with. Besides that, you also get your buttons. How else are you going to close up your coat if you don't have buttons to do it? And these buttons that they provide are absolutely fantastic. Um, you can get these from places like Regimental Quartermaster or directly from uh, WW and Co's website. Absolutely love these buttons. Um, yes, they're buttons. So what? These add a lot to an impression. Trust me, they work fantastically for an impression. Plus they're backmarked, which is really cool. How many Civil War reenacting buttons are truly backmarked to the period? Uh, the last part that you get in this cool little bag is beeswax. Um, in our sack coat review video, we actually talked about the beeswax. The beeswax adds strength to your thread and it also actually keeps it from bunching up, uh, knotting up, just because it adds just a little bit of a I guess slickness to it is probably the not the right term to use for it. However, I'm going to use it because I'm doing the video for it. Um, and it's really simple. You just take your thread, 
put your thumb over the thread and just pull down and it coats your wax even or uh, coats your thread evenly with wax and you're just going along sewing after that plus when you actually press your seams open which we'll be covering in the construction of the coat it actually melts the wax into the fibers and to the material around the thread and makes that seam stronger. Um, you could take a seam that has wax thread and put it up against a seam that doesn't have wax thread. You won't be able to tell the difference until you really start uh, pulling it apart. Um, I've noticed without wax thread, it definitely pulls and can actually tear a lot easier compared to the, uh, the wax thread. So basically the only materials you're gonna need for yourself or the tools is fabric scissors, a buttonhole uh, chisel, which we'll get into this use in later video, a seam ripper or a uh, seam puller, however you want to call it. Eventually you're going to mess up. Uh, I still do it and I've sewn I think six of these coats already. Mistakes happen. We're human. Um, it's just one of those things where you just want to take your time and uh, eventually you know you'll realize oh wait I shouldn't be doing this kind of stitch and we'll get into that here in just a sec. Um, a big help to me is chalk. I have blue and white. Uh, I prefer the blue obviously on stuff like the sleeve linings or the uh, darker material for the interfacings and the inner lining, stuff like that. And white for the material uh, itself, the blue material. It's great, It just draw it on. Oops, I messed up. You just rub it out. Not even a line. And the blue is exactly the same way. And these little guys are awesome. They're just little rollers. You just take them and you just roll them back, just like that. Another thing that is a huge help, especially if you want to do your seams fairly straight, granted, the Schuylkill Arsenal actually supplied these to everyone to sew. Um, they were paid to sew these, so you had various uh, skills, skill sets, excuse me, um, from very high end to very poor, you know, the sleeve falls off after five minutes of wearing it kind of thing. Um, but you want to be wearing it, you want to take pride in your work, and you want fairly straight seams, a, uh, a sewing gauge. I, I'm not sure exactly what it's called. It's what I prefer to call it. And you just set this little slide to whatever seam width you need. So half inch, an inch, all the way out to six inches. However, you're not going to be using six inch seams on this unless you have a uh, Fatigue blouse the size of a circus tent and you need really strong seams. That would probably be the only possible way. Or if you're doing a kit for someone smaller and you're just going to open up those seams and let them grow into it to save money. That is an option. Um, but besides that, all you really need is time, patience, and comfort. Um, I'm in my sewing clothes right now. Just a tank top, shorts... Uh, usually I'll have an audiobook playing or some mellow music, you know, whatever gets your mind just kind of zenned out, concentrating, things like that. And, you know, you sew, uh, whether it's half an hour a day, an hour a day. Um, this past winter, I was laid up with uh, some medical stuff. I busted out two full kits in four days. I was bored out of my mind. I was basically on bed rest had nothing else to do. The only time I could really get up is if I had to use the bathroom or to shower. So I just sat down. I think I breezed through four or five audiobooks and had a great time sewing for members in our unit. Um, it really is a great lot of fun sewing these kits. Now the other part, and it's even listed on the website, for Wamba White and Company. These kits do not teach you how to sew. Don't make the mistake I did the first time I bought one of these. It'll be easy. And I had no clue what was going on. I didn't know a back stitch from a whip stitch. I didn't know an overcast from a top stitch. But I looked it up and 
over time slowly taught myself how to sew and I still have that coat today. It's not the best quality sewing job I've ever done, but it served a purpose or served its purpose. It's still around. There's no problems. The sleeve hasn't fallen off. The collar hasn't caught fire, which if you're sewing and something catches fire, you're doing something completely wrong. The only way that will happen is if you set your iron down on your material. Don't do that. Worst thing you could probably ever do. That's the other tool that I just forgot to talk about was your iron. You're going to have to press seams open. It'll be a big help, especially with the lining. You'll hear enough about that when I get to that portion of the, uh, of the series of sewing one of these coats. Um, the other thing that uh, I have to say about the, the stitching, practice. Um, before you start on a kit, just go down to your Joann's, Michael's, Hobby Lobby, Walmart if they uh, in your area if they sell uh, just basic muslin and just practice those stitches. You're going to need to know, and the stitches are listed on here. Uh, I believe it is your back stitch, your overcast, your whip stitch, and your top stitch. So four stitches. Um, oh, and your running stitch. Excuse me. So five. The most basic of stitches is your running stitch. And that's usually just for your sleeve linings. Um, and after that, just knowing what... Uh, the sewing terminology is your right side versus your wrong side. Um, yes, there is a meaning to that. So getting into, and I'll definitely be covering this in the other videos, is what side is the right? What side is the wrong? Well, the right side is going to be the side sticking out. It's going to be the side that is being shown, essentially. Um, the wrong side Obviously, the right side is the one being shown. It's on the elements, so to speak. So the wrong side is going to be the inside. So for visual aid, right side, wrong side. Easy enough, right? I hope so. Um, and then after that, just as I said, taking your time. Time is your friend when you're sewing one of these. Um, unless you have an event two days uh, after you get your kit. And if you can do it, awesome. I would love to see a time-lapse video of someone just completely busting through a kit like this in two days. However, that's not realistic. There's some people that have spent a year, year and a half sewing these kits. Uh, personally, I get bored easily. I enjoy sewing, so I usually spend a week sewing these kits. Um, doing videos, or doing the video obviously for this, is going to be taking a little longer. Obviously, you set up the camera. This is how you do this, kind of going slow. Um, if I have a fast forward feature, I'm going to be utilizing that like crazy. Um, worst comes to worst, um, in the video uh, series that I'll be doing this for, I'll probably just Martha Stewart it. Um, essentially, I'll do half and then kind of show a brief overview of how to do the other part and then show you the finished product of what it's supposed to be like. So I'll get halfway with the cuff lining and then show you the one that's already done. Just so you guys know, um, this isn't going to be a complete stitch by stitch by stitch process of how to sew these. It'll be a quick and dirty uh, rundown of how to do it, but it'll be informative. I'm not going to try to cheat those who are wanting to upgrade their kit and their impression by not going through the full process. It will be the full process. I guarantee that it'll just be a expedited full process. So uh, thank you very much for watching. Um, if you have any questions, please feel, please feel free to comment down below. Uh, if you like the video, please give it a like. That way uh, kind of shows what uh, what kind of videos we should be gearing our uh, gearing for for our viewers, such as yourself. Obviously, for Sergeant's Kep's uh, woodworking videos are a big hit. It's definitely one of those things that isn't covered much in uh, the reenacting community. Um, if you really like the videos that we put out, please subscribe. Make sure you hit the little bell notification so when I start getting these videos out on how to sew a sack coat kit for 
a month. So every Sunday or Monday, one of these videos will be coming out on how to do it. If you guys have a kit and kind of want to follow the process along, that's awesome. I'd, I'm happy that this would be able to help you guys along. Uh, also, you can visit our website at secondusss.com where we have a comparison uh, article talking about uh, the period correct, um, oddly enough, Wamba kit was used in it, versus your mainstream, run-of-the-mill, your $70, $80 Sutler Row fatigue blouse. Um, so again, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video when we start on these kits. Thank you.